Stolen Words, written by Melanie Florence, illustrated by Gabrielle Grimard. She came home from school today, skipping and dancing, humming a song under her breath clutching a dream catcher she had made from odds and ends, bits of string, plastic beads, and brightly colored feathers. Her glossy braids danced against her shoulders, swaying with her, black as a raven's wing. Grandpa, she asked, clutching his hand, spinning under his arm before dropping it again. How do you say grandfather in Cree? He stopped breathing for a moment. A lifetime to a seven-year-old. He looked down at her sadly. I don't remember, he answered. I lost my words a long time ago. A frown clouded her face. How do you lose words, Grandpa? she asked. They took them away, he answered. She thought for a moment. Where did they take them? she asked. Where they took all of us, he said. Away from home. Away from laughter and soft words. Away from our mothers. Who cried for us. She reached for his gnarled hand. Who took you away, Grandpa? She asked quietly. Men and women dressed in black, talking to us with words we did not know, he answered. They reached home and sat on the stairs together. Where did they take you, Grandpa? she asked. Away to a school that was cold and lonely, where angry white faces raised their voices and their hands when we used our words, he answered. They took our words and locked them away, punished us until we forgot them, until we sounded like them. Harsh, sharp words, so different from the sound of our beautiful ones. She touched his weathered face, tried to wipe the sadness away with her soft hands. She looked down at her lap and handed him the dream catcher that she had made for her room. You take this, Grandpa, she said. Maybe it will help you find your words again. He smiled at her, his granddaughter, and touched her innocent face, a face that had never known hard words or raised hands. He smiled and kissed her head. The next day, she skipped out of school again, smiling widely at her grandfather. She stopped in front of him and took a deep breath. Tan se nimasum? she said. His eyes widened. She smiled brighter than the sun. I found your words, Grandpa, she said. She pulled a tattered, well-worn paperback out of her book bag. Introduction to Cree, it said. My teacher helped me find this for you at the library. He reached for it, his hands shaking, opened it, feeling the soft, much-loved pages under his fingers. Nusissum, he whispered. Granddaughter. The word felt familiar in his mouth. It felt like his home, his mother. He turned the pages of the book carefully. Masinaigan, book. He turned another, word after word. Pikisquewin, 
language, his words, pages and pages of them. He looked at his granddaughter, his new sisum. Thank you. Teen key, he said. Will you read to me? she asked, taking his hand in hers and leading him home. Will you teach me your words? His heart danced as he nodded, holding the book against his chest. From 1831 to 1996, the government of Canada took First Nations children away from their families and sent them to residential schools. The government and the white men and women who taught at these schools were prejudiced. They believed that white people were better than First Nations or indigenous people. The children were forbidden to speak their own language and were forced to speak only English. Because of this cruel practice, many, many children suffered. Many, many families were torn apart. And much of the rich, beautiful indigenous culture was lost. A culture full of wisdom we all desperately need. <laughs>